Thanks, Lance, for taking time to do this interview. My pleasure. Uh, you established a foundation called Briggs for Kids. Mm -hmm. Why did you start it, and what's the primary focus? Well, it uh, it really begins by not forgetting where I come from. Um, you know, there were a lot of kids that I grew up around that were talented and um, in many different ways, uh, but didn't have a lot of the opportunities, you know, that, that some of the other kids did, you know, in, in other areas. Um, so, you know, what I wanted to do was create a foundation that targeted less fortunate kids. And we, you know, our goal at Bricks for Kids is to, um, is to create a relief, you know, in financial and emotional, uh, basically financial and emotional relief for unfortunate kids or less fortunate kids. Um, we've been able to do that, you know, over the last, you know, six, seven years um, in holiday shopping in the wintertime. Uh, we take about 50 kids from, you know, Chicago Housing Authority, uh, Girls Hope, Boys Hope, um, Salvation Army, um, and they go to the, the large target downtown Chicago and pick out whatever they want. You know, uh, it's uh, it's always rewarding. You see the kids' faces and, uh, and uh, you know, we... we, we you know, my team has always worked real hard around uh, around the year, throughout the year, so that uh, we can see the uh, happy faces on the kids from Christmas time. That's great. I mean, it's evident that you're you're passionate about Bricks for Kids. Mm -hmm. uh, what events do you have coming up, and, and where can our readers get more information? Uh, well, what I do have right now, I, I work three camps um, in three different areas. Uh, one in here in Chicago, a football camp. I have a camp in Tucson, Arizona, where I went to college, and in my hometown of Sacramento. Um, we're working on uh, a charity event in the springtime. But um, but if there's any information that anyone needs to needs to uh, to get contact info or want to learn more, want to want to uh, donate or want to uh, or help with Bricks for Kids, you can go to bricksforkids.com. You can go to LanceBriggs.com, you can go to Lance's Comic World dot com um, and all of those will have links that will that will lead you to wherever you need to go. Wonderful. Um, you know, take us back a little bit. Tell us about the, the first moment you realized you were you were good at football. Um I can tell you when I realized that I was I love football. You know, my first year in nineteen eighty eight, I sat the bench the whole year, you know, and I was uh, you know, I got about six or seven plays a game where they had to had to play me. Uh, but at the end of that year, you know, mom, she asked me if I wanted to play again. And, and uh, you know, I was excited. I said, I do. So, but next year I want to start. You know, I want to, I want to, I want to earn a starting job. So uh, I knew then that, uh, that this is what I wanted, wanted to do. And that was at Arizona? This was in Sacramento. In Sacramento, so, yeah. so high school. Uh, this is before high school. This is before when I was school. seven years old. Wow. Uh, what, what are the biggest changes in between coaching that you've seen at the high school level and college and professional level? Um, I think as you get older, uh, coaches' patience uh, grows a lot shorter, you know. Um, I mean, and, of course, it's going to grow shorter because a lot of these coaches, their jobs are on the line. Sure. So, uh, you know, as you get older, you know, the, the expectation of you is, is a lot higher. You know, um, your learning curve is a lot steeper. So, uh you know, and that's, you know, that's evaluated, you know, through high school and in college um, and also in the pros. You've got the second longest streak for, for Pro Bowls uh, currently. Mm -hmm. How does that make you feel? Uh, it makes me feel good. It makes me feel good. It makes you feel like you want to, uh, it's, it's a norm, you know, and uh, you want to continue and keep the norm. So uh, it, it means that, uh, that my play has been consistent for a number of years. And you know another thing that a lot of people talk about is you almost you don't miss games. Right. How important is that? I've been durable. I've been pretty durable over my career. Uh, I think I've only missed a, a handful of games altogether. Um, I, I feel lucky. I feel blessed um, to be able to play it as long as I have and as healthy as I've been. Um, and hopefully that'll continue on. If you could play with any player, living or not, who would it be? <sighs> Any player, living or not, there's a long list there, you know. Um, I'd like to play with Joe Montana. You know, he was a big childhood hero. Uh, you know, I'd like to play with that whole team, that 49ers team, you know, just to, you know, celebrate and and uh, and see Smooth Joe throw passes to Jerry Rice and Roger Craig. Those are a lot of my favorites back in the day. Mm -hmm. 
Is there a person that, if you met them, would make you speechless? Hmm. If there's a person that would make me speechless, it'd have to be some great grandfather or great grandmother that I never met. You know, uh, a lot of my family history I'm still learning. So uh, uh, to see uh, someone in my family tree, you know, would, would probably make me speechless. Uh, new players have a lot of anxiety when starting out in the league. Mm -hmm. How did you feel your rookie year, and what advice would you give your younger self? Rookie year, um, I wanted to play so bad, but when I got on the field, I just one thing that ran through my head all the time was don't screw up, don't screw up, don't screw up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and what would I say to young guys? Um, you know. Be as sharp as you can before Sunday. You know, nothing can shake nerves. We're all going to be nervous, but uh, but by the time you get there on Sunday, just let it all out there. Let it all hang out. What do you see your legacy to be with the Chicago Bears, and how has that changed since you first started as a rookie? When I was a rookie, I wanted to. You know, my goal was to start on this team and prove that I was that 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 I'm a deserving starter on the team. You know, now. You know, uh, 10 years later, um, I just uh, I want to win a ring. I want to be remembered as one of the Bears, you know, the special Chicago Bears that wanted to brought a championship back to the city. Uh, what, what's the worst part about traveling for an away game? How do you cope with it? Scheduling. Um, you know, sometimes we, when we travel, we play a day game, which means we have early meetings during the night as soon as we touch down. So it doesn't give us a lot of downtime to, uh, you know, have dinner or share with friends that we might be visiting. So, uh, you know, when we travel and we get a chance to to leave the city, I'd love to, you know, uh, go to dinner and 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 mingle with my friends that that are that are all amongst the country. So, you know, sometimes a tight schedule doesn't allow. Sure. Does does the Thursday games help or, or prevent some of that? Yeah, Thursday games it helps it. But, uh, you know, for the weekend, you know, depending on this, our schedule. Uh, uh, but it's tough on the body to go play Sunday and then turn around, you know, and, and within five days and play another game. Yeah. And, and that leads to the next question. Since you were a rookie, there's been a lot of rule changes that have happened mm -hmm. uh, to protect players from injury. Uh, do you think about getting injured during a game? And do you, does it affect the way that you play the game? No. No, I don't. I don't think about getting injured during the game at all. You know, um, I'm thinking about hitting people. Uh, you know, dropping back, getting picks, getting turnovers, and stuff like that. Rooting on my teammates. Um, it's always been part of the game. Yeah, what about your recovery time? How how long does it take if you play on Sunday? How long does it take for your body to feel as normal as it gets? It takes a little bit longer now than it used to. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, um, you know. The way the way everything's set up now, you know, we we get a lot of massages, ice baths, you know, um, bags of ice. We ice stem. It's a lot of treatment that we take. You know, when by the time Wednesday comes around after a Sunday game, you know, um, we're we're back at it again. When you choose to leave the NFL, um, how will life change for you? And, and what are some of your post football goals? When. When I finish playing in the NFL, um, life will move a little bit slower. Um, you know, my body will be a lot happier. You know, um, um, I'm, I plan on treating my body very well. You know, it, I, I'm thankful for what my body has allowed me to do up to this point. And, um, and when I'm done, you know, I love to coach kids in football. Um, I feel like, uh, once you've gotten to a, a certain level of a professional, you know, one of the things that one of the key things that we can do is we can give back to, you know, some of the young kids that are trying to learn football since we've made it to the highest stage. Uh, I love cooking. You know, I'll probably go back to school and uh, in the culinary arts, uh, going to go back to school and, and study uh, different languages. So uh, we can keep life busy. Good. Uh, many players have established a brand around what their name. What do you think the Briggs brand would represent to the public? Briggs brand is is redefining self and uh, and the value of self. You know, no matter what it is that you do, um, it's important. You know, it's not less important than, than what somebody else is doing. You know, uh, when I when I started reading comics as a kid, uh, 
you know, I love comics. I read it all the time, you know, when I got into college, you know, because it wasn't, you know, probably the coolest thing for me to do in the locker room, you know, I kind of kept it to myself, you know, but, uh, but there's nothing wrong, you know, with liking comics or whatever it is that you love, you know, and, and, and everyone should be able to express themselves that way. Oftentimes, players are, are unsuccessful in a lot of business ventures. It seems in the media, all you hear, of course, is the bad stories and mm -hmm. other things. Um, why do you think that is, and, and what advice would you give to somebody moving to that next phase in life? Uh, you know, uh, I think, I think um, for a lot of people, you know, discussion and gossip um, uh, tends to be popular. You know, a lot of people want to talk about you know, things that, that, that are an issue. You know, um, I do think that in the media there's a lack of discussion on the positive things because so many of these uh, athletes or celebrities are doing so many great things in the community and it's being left out because of, you know, this the negativity, you know, these incidents that are happening. So, uh, you know, I, I don't, I just think that, that, that a lot of the public, they they kind of, gravitate toward negativity, which is unfortunate, you know, but, uh, but, you know, that, that's something that I, I would hope that was, that's going to change in the future. Yeah. And a lot of, a lot of players, you, you, again, you always hear the stories of how they don't manage their money mm -hmm. and you have filing for bankruptcy. Um, any advice you could, you could give a younger player about how they can manage their, their money more wisely? Uh, I'd say first meet your savings goals, um, eliminate as much debt as possible. Um, uh, I think those are two very important goals. Uh, set goals. You know, set goals. You set a, a a month goal. Set a week goal. You know, that extends to a month goal, to a three month goal, to a six month goal, to a yearly goal. You know, and and try to reach your goals. You know, financially. Um, I think once you once someone gets used to that, it's all habit forming. That uh, you put yourself in the right in the, in the driver's seat. Tell us a little bit about your off-season life. Uh, how do you spend your time? What do you enjoy doing the most? I love enjoy playing playing with my kids. Um, love watching my kids as they're getting bigger, they're growing, they're we're, they're talking to me and holding long conversations. Um, you know, going to events together. Uh, I love spending time with my family. You know, we. Uh, just in the backyard doing barbecues and, you know, my sisters, my nieces, nephews, my mom, everybody just out having a good time. Uh, if you weren't a football player, what do you think you'd be? Be a baseball player. Baseball. Mm -hmm. You loved it as a kid? I did. I did. Um, it, you know, between baseball and football, um, I just had to pick one. Mm -hmm. um, our high school uh, had, you know, one of the top baseball teams in the state. We also had one of the top football teams in the state, so you know, I knew uh, football-wise I was going to be in the, in the running. And baseball, I wasn't so much at the time. What position did you play? I was a catcher and center fielder. Uh, how do you maintain your your fitness in the off season? Uh, every year in the off season, I uh, I take about a month, month and a half, and this is right after we do our off season workouts with the team, and I spend with uh, with uh, trainer Corey Edmonds who's now with NC State, and so this year I spent it in North Carolina, and uh, it's just a, a, a grueling two week, or, or excuse me, grueling five five weeks of, of football training, and then in the afternoon I, I work off to a, a, a boxing training, you know, so uh, between those two, those double days, yeah, I'm always prepared when, when this football season comes around. There's been a lot of controversy surrounding uh, performance enhancing drugs, mm -hmm. uh, baseball, predominantly, but also things like cycling. Footballs remain relatively clean. Mm -hmm. Any thoughts about why that is? Well, I mean, football, is, they're, they're all over it. You know, they always have been all over, at least for, for as many years as I've been in the league. Um, and, uh, you know, for, and I can't speak for everybody, you know, when it comes to this. I know that, I know that the NFL is on top of that, that issue, but uh, for myself, um, I've never been into um, uh, anything like that, you know, I've never been into even, uh, you know, uh, the, the o omega, you know, the whey proteins, the weight gainers, any of that stuff, just never been into it. Just all just hard work. All natural. All natural. <laughs> um, you mentioned your kids before. Mm -hmm. Do you encourage them to pursue sports? Absolutely. I think, uh, 
the tool that that uh, or the most important tool that sports teaches it, it teaches um, um, us how to live with each, with each other. It's how it teaches a lot of people how to live with differences. You know, um, it's a, it's one of the greatest melting pots. Um, when I played college ball, we we had uh, I think uh, about fifteen different uh, cultures. You know, on our on one team that had to find a way to work together for one common goal. Um, there are just many life lessons that sports teaches, and and I think it's important that uh, that um, if my kids choose not to play sports, at least to give it a try. And and again, you you mentioned it before, but. Uh, the comics. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you have a, a passion for comics. When was it started? How did you get to the point? I was as a kid, but uh, I, I probably around it's probably around six or seven. Uh, just randomly going into a car trading shop with my mom, uh, which we did all the time. So we collected baseball, football cards. Um, but there was just shelves and shelves of comics up, and I just uh, I kind of picked one up and. Kind of never stopped picking them up since. I uh, just have a passion for it. I love to read stories. I love them so much that I'm not, my comics aren't in the best condition because I go back and I read them over and read them over. Uh -huh. You know, um, that's you know what 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 I love so much about. It. Do you have a favorite book that you have? Uh, I've always been a Darkness fan. Um, um, I've always been into the X Men, X Force, uh, Batman. The, Goodness, yeah, Catwoman. You know, I'm, I'm all over the place. Mm -hmm. All right, what are you working on now with the the website, the comic website? Uh, we're just working on some new material right now. You know, we're we're just always reaching out to our fans and seeing what our fans, uh, um, how they feel about new things that are coming up. For instance, the Avengers movie, um, any of the new uh, the new DC stuff that's coming out. Um, you know, the uh, Avengers vs X Men, which is uh, really interesting to me, uh, you know. It's there's a it, it's it's a form that's really a, a way to connect football with comics. That's a pretty interactive site as well. Um, did, you saw the Avengers movie? I sure did. What'd you think? Loved it. Loved it. Loved it. And uh, that's just a couple offbeat questions. What would be in your your current playlist? Hmm. My current playlist, uh, Miguel, um, he has a song out called Adorn, um, a lot of Jeremiah, you know, it's, it's, I'm thinking of my R&B mix right now, mm -hmm. I've been listening to a lot of R&B. And you mentioned when you stopped playing football, you might go back to culinary school. Yes. Do you have a specific type of food you love to cook, or is it pretty much just general? I, I love it all. Yeah. I love it all. I love, I love cooking with spices. You know, um, I love lots of flavors. I love to cook marinades. Um, I love gumbos, you know, uh, jambalayas. Um, I'm, I'm, there's no one area when it comes to cooking that I'm stuck to. And if we looked in your fridge right now, what would we find? Right now, uh, there'd be half leftovers. Half, yeah, pretty much half leftovers. When you do take a vacation, mm -hmm. do you guys have a favorite vacation destination? Anywhere warm. Anywhere warm. Anywhere with the water warm. You can walk with sandals. Um, you can go to sleep listening to the waves. That's a great destination. Well, thanks again, Lance, for a little bit of insight into you as a person. We certainly appreciate it. My pleasure.